<laughs> so listen, fellow gardeners, this is Patricia from the Helicopter Gardening Show, and today I have the pleasure of welcoming Brooke Bennett to my show. She is an incredible gardener. She has an incredible YouTube channel called The Vintage Gardener. Welcome, Brooke. Thank you for having me, Pat. <laughs> now, her garden is extensive. Can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and how you got into gardening? Okay, so uh, my my actual paying job at this point is as an attorney, and I've been practicing for 19 years. Um, but I didn't get into gardening until I was probably 20. Um, my mom was a gardener, uh, but she banned me from the garden because I was like killing everything. <laughs> um, because my mom, um, we had different personalities, and like I'm more of a technical type gardener, and so. She knew I was struggling, but she didn't, wasn't really able to identify why I was struggling and how to kind of explain it to me. So at a certain point in time, she just, you know, gave up. But I have to say, like, she, it was a long time before she gave up on me. Um, I, I killed some trees and some lawn and it was, you know, I think the lawn was what was like the final straw. Uh, but when I was 20, home for Christmas break uh, from college, I was wa- up at one o'clock in the morning watching the syndicated episodes of Martha Stewart and she was doing an episode on like soil, like what your soil, the consistency of your soil. And at that point I was like, Oh, I didn't realize there was like a science behind this. I guess for me, I always looked at soils. Like, you know, you put a, a cut flower in a v- vase of water, you just put plants in the ground. I never really thought about the fact that the soil was actually supposed to do something. And There's so, so much behind it. Yes, it is. And so I started watching her show uh, quite religiously because in addition to gardening, it was like cooking, which I love to cook and I love to bake. And so um, I started experimenting a little bit in my mom's garden. But, um, you know, I was in, I graduated from college and I went to law school. And so, you know, I didn't really start doing gardening until after I got out of law school. And then especially once I got my house my first house um, in like 2016, then, you know, I started planting stuff and um, it was, um, it was a good experience. I, I did struggle a little bit. And one of the reasons I struggled was because when I was looking for information, um, there are a lot of the gardening information online and even on YouTube channels, um, which was starting to become, you know, a big thing at the time really didn't apply to New Jersey. New Jersey has some very, Um, specific kind of tricky growing conditions Mm -hmm. and it was like I was taking parts and pieces from other places and trying it in my garden sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't and I got to the point where I was like you know what I just need to scrap (laughs) scrap it all and start from from the get-go and basically go and and make it more scientific observation like what are the conditions what are the factors or something's not working did I notice that you know did I notice anything? How, like if I, if one plant here was doing okay, the exact same plant here was doing, you know, doing not okay. Like what were the differences between the two? And so I started approaching it that way. And that was one of the reasons, one of many reasons I started my channel was because there just really wasn't a lot of um, New Jersey uh, resources. Uh, mm-hmm. But even though my channel is specifically geared to gardening New Jersey, I provide a lot of science and explanation as to how things work because even if you live in New Jersey and even if you live near me your gardening conditions are not going to be the same as mine you're going to have different pest issues different fungal issues exactly. you might even have a, you might even have a microclimate so I I'm tr- I tr- concentrate on teaching the science behind why things work the way they do so that way if you run a pro- into a problem in your own garden you can you know, process of elimination, figure out what's going, what's going on. Cause as I keep, I've mentioned so many times on my channel and on my, in my podcast, the only way to be a successful garden is to learn how to, gr- how to successfully grow in your particular garden. Specifically be intentional. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, now you, your channel is educational. It's upbeat. Your flowers are glorious. How, how did you come up with the name of uh, why failed manor? Okay, so um, while Fell Manor, um, I'm also a big, I'm, I love books and I love to read. And so um, 
I all I always name my houses. So the last house that I was in, I actually named Wild Eve Cottage, and I don't I know. Love I keep... that. Oh, my and goodness. so um, <laughs> I was I was struggling with the name because I wanted to, I definitely wanted Manor in there because my house was built in 1850, and okay. so it's just be 1840, and so I wanted the man- Manor name in there, but I I was like, ma- what Manor? And um, I was on PBS, and they had um an adaptation of Anne Bronte's novel, The Tenet of Wildfell Hall. And I was like, oh, okay. Wildfell, that's it. So I, cha- I changed the spelling of Wildfell because I think, because um, the book, I think it's just W-I-L-D-F-E-L-L, whereas the way I spell it is W-Y-L-D-E-F-E-L-L. But that's how, that's how I came up with it. And uh, uh, thus far, only one person picked up on the fact that that's where I got it from. I so love my friend, that. She was, she, she, she was watching it on PBS and she was like, is this where you got the name of your house? I was like, you were the, I told her, I was like, you're the only person who, who picked up on that. That's and, awesome. Yep. I have yeah. to go back on PBS. And um, can you tell the audience the name of your nursery? Oh, yeah. So I named my nursery Peonies, Petals, and Posies. Um, so um, it was a lot of, uh, there was a lot that went into a name. Actually, I was using an online name generator. And so I like, and I guess it used like AI tech technology. So I was like typing in all this stuff and it gave me like a whole slew of like potential names. And uh, this was a variation on one of the ones they gave me, but um, peonies are probably like my favorite flower. Uh, Petals obviously is because, is because, you know, petals, because obviously you're going to get a lot of petals. Um, And posies are um, and I, ch- I chose a different sp- alternate spelling for posies, but a posy is the same thing as like a mussy tussy. And um, back in the Victorian era, you know, men and women who were not related were not allowed to communicate with each other. And so that's the whole language of flowers came, became really big in England because each flower had a meaning. And so you would communicate with people um, by the type of flowers that you would put in your posy. And so, and so when I do a lot of um, floral arrangements on my channel, um, it, it, they t- have very specific meanings. And I, I remember correctly, the last one that I did was the commemorative bouquet when um, Queen Elizabeth died. And so I went out to my garden and I pulled very specific flowers based upon the meaning of like what people said about her, that sort of thing. And that's how I arranged um, oh, that's how I, I loved range. her. Mm, mm, mm. I okay. absolutely loved her. That is amazing. I, I know I knew why I was drawn to your channel. Your channel is so beautiful. Then your spirit. And so, I yeah, I went with it. I went with a different type of garden, like like nursery greenhouse type name because it's going to be a different type of. I'm going for a completely different type of experience um, with my um, with my greenhouse nursery which I eventually hope to be able to get a farm and so I view it as like a garden center by a gardener which um a lot of places aren't um and the reason that I wanted to start my own nursery slash greenhouse is because you know when I I'm gardening every year I probably go to between 15 to 20 garden centers in both New Jersey and Pennsylvania and mm-hmm. that's because it's hard to find. It's hard to find a lot of uh, different things because most people carry the exact same stuff. Because most of the places, actually, pretty much all the places, they're really not growing their stuff from seed. They're getting it from distributors, and so everybody's getting it from the same places. And Got so that's it. why, yeah. So if you want to have a truly unique garden, then you have to start things from seed. And so it was like, well, you know what? That's what I should do. I should specialize in hard or, you know, rare um, plants and source things. And I, and I spend an incredible amount of time online just sourcing things for my garden. And some places, thankfully, um, I found that will do wholesale orders. And so now I'll be able to get some, a lot of specialty um, things in that I can sell to people so they can have, you know, hard to find items in their garden too. Oh, I love that. I'm going to have to fly out to your nursery 
you know, I'm here in California, but I'm going to have to just get on the plane and come out there and see your nursery now. I know, I know um, you're even thinking about offering uh, yoga classes, gardening classes. I mean, I mean, it's just outstanding. Yeah, like I said, I, I want it to be, I want it to be an experience. So I want to be able to do things like having uh, yoga in the garden. Um, I would like to have like a display garden because one thing um, that I often struggle with is that you, know, you see something in the pot, but seeing it in the pot and how it actually reacts once it actually gets into the ground in your garden is something completely different. And exactly. I, so I think it would be, and the thing is, unfortunately, I, no garden centers have um, display gardens and which I don't, which I really don't understand. So um, I want to be able to um, have that. Um, I want to be able to have, you know, like seed starting classes, you know, even, um, you know, lectures on things like being able to have like people who have like specialized gardening knowledge come in you know, and do classes, you, you know, so that way, because the thing is, gardening has gone by the wayside in our country. So it's not something that's taught. And right. so, you know, finding, finding information online, trying to find classes is very difficult. I mean, you know, for me, I live about an hour from Longwood Garden, but, and I've taken classes there, but for me, that's still a little too far, right. you know? And so I would love it if there was, place in New Jersey that offered those same type of classes but nobody just nobody does that and so it's um it's a little it's a, it's frustrating so I'm hoping to be able to um you know offer that to people so that people can get in the garden and do what they want to do in the garden rather than you know have to because I think for a lot of people they do they have their garden looks a certain way because number one those are things that are they're getting what's only available. Exactly. And, you know, also they're following a lot of people on, you know, YouTube. And, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing per se wrong with that. No, I, know, that. I know you want to offer garden design, don't you? You want to you, you want to help people learn how to design their own gardens. A exactly. And make it a reflection of you. And there's so many types of gardening skills. Like, for example, espalier. I took last year... I took an espalier class at Longwood and I asked them, Hey, by the way, can you guys do a class on how to topiary your shrubs into various, you know, forms. And so there's things like that, that aren't taught. And right. like, you know, with espalier, there's only one real place in the U S that does espalier trees. And, um, you know, the starting price for some of their trees is like $700, you know? And so wow. some of those yes. things, Exactly. But out the of thing people, is, out of most because, people's reach. Right. Exactly. And, and it's one of those things that like in this country, it's not taught. So that, you know, and there's no reason people can learn it. And, and when I took that class, you know, she was teaching us how to do it. Um, and it's one of those things that I think pe people can learn it, people can do it on their own. And, you know, there's things, it's skills like that that should never have been lost, but unfortunately have been. So exactly is your is your opening still going to be on april the 13th and the 27th yeah so uh yeah so um okay so i have i actually just posted um a list of all the dates i'm going to be doing this season so on april 13th i'm going to be at the burlington county agricultural center and then on the 20th i'll be um on at indian acres tree farm which is in medford new jersey and then the 27th, I'll be back at the Agricultural Center. And then I have a couple weeks off. And then I'm primarily going to be at the Haddonfield Farmer's Market. And that'll start May 18th. And okay. so I but I listed all the dates on my website now. Okay. Okay. So so the address to the uh, Burlington County, um, the, the first place you mentioned, is that 500 Center, Centerton? Centerton? Centerton Drive? Mar yes, Okay. Yes, centered in Road in Morristown, New Jersey. Okay. Now, um, I I, I want to find out. Now, I know one of your YouTube channels. You did a, a tour of your of your rose garden. You did the Coco mm -hmm. Loco. Yes, and the Celestial Night and the Lagavulin yes. and yes. the Blue Girl. Now, yes. you're not going to be shipping at this point. No, I'm not going to be shipping at this point. Um, that's but, like 
I'm licensed to do so, but um, I have to find out. I mean, the thing I the thing is, I don't want to ship plants that are going to be destroyed. So I need to right. get. I need to source proper containers. Um, the other thing I need to figure out is if I want to ship things that are bigger as opposed to more like plug type things for people to have. So I'm still working. I'm still working all of that out in terms of what I'm going to do. Um, okay. And, yeah. Okay, no problem. And you you can be found on Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, and you're also on a podcast, very well established podcast called Podcast Beam, and it's called the Wit Beyond Measure dot org. No, 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 no. Okay, so Podbean is the host. My my um my podcast is called Vintage Gardener Podcast, okay, and so all, all of even them. though okay. Pod. Yeah, so even though Podbean is the host, um, you can find it on iTunes. So because I, I have it sent to iTunes. Oh, on iTunes too. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I have a website um, for peonies, posies, and petals, and it's like I think it's like peonies, petal, peonies, petals, posies, square dot com. Uh, but I do have a blog. It's called peonies, petals, peonies, petals, and posies dot wordpress dot com. Um, on, let's see, um, Facebook, I have two pages. I have the Vintage Gardener NJ, and then I have Peonies, Petals, and Posies. And then on Instagram, I'm all, I'm the Vintage Gardener NJ, and then I have, on my Instagram handle is Peonies, Petals, Posies. But on YouTube, I only have one channel, and that's the Vintage Gardener NJ. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so... Awesome. Yeah, so I, I decided to split up because at first when I was thinking about doing this, I was planning to be, you know, the vintage gardener NJ until I realized that I had I was gonna have to move to Pennsylvania to go or what I needed. But then the more I started thinking about it, I realized that, you know, I wanted the the vintage gardener channel to be geared towards my personal garden and you know like because I like historical style garden, so I wanted to be more that and keep the business strictly to a, you know, business, um, account. So, yeah, I saw you, I saw you mention that. So you want to be very intentional about what you're doing, you know, where you want to go and you're right. going to do it <laughs> right now. I, I noticed that you also mentioned in one of your YouTubes that, uh, you used the cold frame. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. I know some people start their stuff indoors, but I love the cold frame. Can you tell me why you went to the cold frame? Oh like well, seedlings. yeah. So I started doing a, a cold frame because it was easier. Because at the time I didn't have like a, a complete setup indoors. I now I do, and actually with my cold frame, um, you know, cold frames can be like a kite in a windy day. And sometimes in New Jersey it gets pretty windy, so like the my cold frame, the cover on it actually ripped off. Um, wow. and so yeah, it did. It it, it, it tore. And I never replaced it because, like I said, I have, like, an incomplete indoor setup going. Um, and, you know, especially I, I don't necessarily I, – I don't want to stay in this particular – where I am now for a very long time. So, like, my mom had asked me, Are, do you think you'll get a greenhouse? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't want to spend the money on a greenhouse and then maybe in three years have to turn around and leave it. Um, mm -hmm, if anything, exactly. Uh, if anything, I do like so. My house like was built in 1840, and I do have a standalone garage, I, which I refer to as a carriage house because it's, it was one of my uh, my house originally had like 60 acres, and this was one of the barns. And so, what I could may consider doing, especially depending upon how the season goes, That's is amazing. that amazing. Yeah, is that inside of the carriage house there is an area that I would have to say it's probably you know maybe 35 by 40. So it's a good size area that mm. I would, I said, well, you know, depending upon how things go financially, I would consider, um, number one, I would have to rewire the entire, um, barn, but rewire it and just take that finish off that area. So put, you know, insulation and stuff. So that could be my growing, my growing space. Um, and so there would be, so that way, like, because even if I left that behind, somebody would definitely use it as a workshop. I, it, it would exactly. be easy to convert and that sort of thing. So that is something that I am considering. Because right now, I've got all of my racks and stuff in my dining room and in my kitchen. Every gardener understands that. 
<laughs> exactly. My mom was like, dude, you have dirt in your kitchen. I'm like, listen, it's fine. The microbes are fine. <laughs> like, you know, that's, well, that's, you know, so that's, that is something I, I would, I would consider doing on there. You know, do- are you going to be yeah. willing to come back on my show? After- I know you're going to be a busy lady, but I would yeah. love to have you back. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. That, yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> Okay, so for anybody listening, please go to the Vintage Gardener's YouTube channels, any of the sites that she's mentioned. She is a dynamic entrepreneur, and she is doing big things. Let's give her all the support we can, and please go to her YouTube channel. I mean, she's a scientist. (laughs) If you go to her page, she explains everything, and your gardens are just... I cannot yeah. wait for you to start classes. Maybe even before uh, you get your nursery set up, maybe you can even start offering some of them, consider offering some of them on YouTube. I would certainly sign up for them. I mean, I have a lot to learn. You know what? I, you know, so the thing is, um, I don't know. I, I guess I probably could um, get people to, I guess, pay. Um, but I mean, that's really one of the reasons why I have the podcast is because I go into more science on that. Mm-hmm. So you're not watching like, you know, talking head um, to a certain extent. I feel and I know it's a really horrible way to look at it, but I feel bad about charging people money for that. I mean, I know it is a skill and it, you know, and it is. Yeah, and that's and part you, of growing and, your business. Right. Yeah, I, I know. It's just that I feel I feel bad because it's gardening should be accessible to everybody Correct. and i and i i don't like the fact that people this is not knowledge that you know is like being a lawyer where it's like hardcore specialized this is knowledge that i feel like everybody should have and i hate you know the thought of putting um an impediment to just like basic kind of knowledge that people um i feel people should have but i know That's and everyone looks at me thoughtful. It's yeah, everyone thoughtful. looks at me like I'm. Everyone looks at me like I'm crazy, no, and I'm just like that's, it, that's I, very it's very just, thoughtful. Well, you know, especially, <laughs> especially with like food, especially like with food, because like you know, food, especially in today's rising prices. You know, I know there are people exactly. who who are even like middle class who you know it's it's you know putting like getting things like fresh produce can be an issue and there's no reason for food poverty. Like if everybody knew how to grow, grow food. You know, if everyone who had a house, you mm-hmm. know, even had a small, you know, Patio. even a couple of raised, yeah, even, yeah, yeah. small, a, a couple small raised beds, like you could totally eliminate food poverty. And so, and that's another reason why I don't want to have to charge people. Because that's I feel inspiring. Like it, it's like people you need are to truly eat. truly inspiring. <laughs> You're a very inspiring young lady. Yeah, I just, I am so pleased and honored to have you on my show. And I'm definitely going to have you back. So once once again, tell everybody all of the sites where they can reach you. Okay, so I'm on YouTube as the Vintage Gardener NJ. Um, I'm on Facebook as the Vintage Gardener NJ. Um, that's where I use I will be posting pictures of like my personal garden. Um, I'm on Facebook as Peonies Petals and Posies, and that's where I'm going to be posting like uh, the business stuff, like where I'm going to be, like for example, what type of plants I'll be offering that week at the um, at the farmers market. Um, and then on Instagram, I'm the Vintage Gardener and Jay, as well as Peonies, Petals, Posies. And so, um, and once again, Peonies, Petals, Posies is going to be the business side. And okay. the Vintage Gardener is going to be my personal, you know, my personal uh, garden. Because the thing is, in my personal garden, I will be doing like um, flower trials. So I'll be trying things out in my garden to decide if that's something that I want to offer Um in you know for my business um, that's wonderful because the only thing is I, you know i i feel like i need to have experience experience with things especially considering the fact that so many of the plants i'm growing people don't actually sell them in store and and mm. the only way to have it is to grow it from seed so in reality i don't know what these things are going to do when so you I have to test to go- it yeah. exactly and and like one of the plants that i'm offering this year which is called cafe creme digitalis Every single packet of seeds, every in everywhere online you see that plant, it says um, 24 to 36 inches. Okay, 
I've seen it in real life, obviously, in my garden, plus Chanticleer, which is in Pennsylvania. In my garden, it got five feet tall. In Chanticleer, wow. it was about five feet tall. And um, there's a flower farmer that um, I'm good, like good acquaintances with. Um, she's about maybe 40 minutes north of me. And I know she grows. And I was like, hey, by the way, how big was it in your garden? And she's very into organic stuff. So she's always amending her beds. Hers were like closer to like six feet tall. So I don't know why the tags say 24 to 36 inches. Wow. Um, so, you know, so, and, and it's, th- it's right. And so it's things like that. So, right, right. Well, Brooke, I, I love having you on my show. And I'm going to definitely reach out to you and have you come back. I can learn so much from you. I'm positive the audience can learn a lot from you. And again, I thank you for being on my show today. Uh, oh, anyone, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you for coming, and I will be in contact with you very soon. Okay, thank you. All right, you take care now. Bye-bye. I will. Bye.